Hello, I'm Rebecca Miller-Webster, and I'm the Director of Client Apps here at GitHub. Client Apps include GitHub Desktop, which we'll be talking about today, as well as GitHub CLI and GitHub Mobile. And this is me dressed up as Rainbow Bright for Halloween in an amazing costume that my mom made. Every time you see me, my hair will probably be a different color. So what I'm basically saying is I'm over here living my childhood dream. I don't know how much you know or remember about Rainbow Bright, but Rainbow Bright was a cartoon that ran briefly in the 1980s and then was rebooted in 2014. The short of it is, the whole world was dark and dreary and gray, and Rainbow Bright saved the day and brought color and joy and happiness to all the land. And she did so along with her unicorn and the color kids, who each had unique personalities and skills they brought to fighting darkness. At GitHub, we are the home for all developers. And as software runs more and more of the world, from our cars and doorbells, to the apps and websites we use every day, to generating art, who developers are and how they work has become more and more expansive. In fact, today, users use GitHub to, of course, write, collaborate, automate, and secure their code. But we also see designers sharing their portfolio ideas, and politicians are even writing and sharing legislation on GitHub. In other words, today the users of GitHub are a spectrum of skills, goals, experiences, needs, and motivations. It's a rainbow, if you will. Come on, you knew I was gonna get there. At GitHub, we are here to help users build from wherever they are. And GitHub Desktop is a powerful tool, no matter your workflow, programming language, or environment. Desktop works seamlessly for open source developers, side projects, as well as teams, organizations, and enterprises. We simplify whatever aspects of Git and GitHub you need, whether it is using GitHub Desktop as your primary mechanism for committing, pushing, and pulling your work, or simply making one workflow, like reordering commits or working with submodules, a bit easier. Just for fun, let's use Rainbow Bright's Color Kids to illustrate how you can use GitHub Desktop for your workflow. So let's start by talking about Red Butler. He's a little fiery, he's a little spicy, he likes to experiment, he might have lots of branches, be making lots of changes and needing to undo and potentially move commits around. But before he shares his work with his team, he may want to clean up his commit history. GitHub Desktop makes it super easy to amend, reorder, squash, or cherry pick your commits. Now Lala Orange is very creative and expressive, like many designers I know. I recently heard a great story where a design team at a large organization wanted to better collaborate with their developer peers, but most of the designers felt uncomfortable with Git and found it hard to remember the nuances of the syntax. Meanwhile, they're of course flying through shortcuts on Figma, which the developers can't remember. So in this company, the design team did a workshop on using GitHub Desktop in order to give the designers a Git workflow that was simple and straightforward and allowed them to successfully integrate their workflow with their developer peers. This led to faster delivery of value for the users at this company. Lalo Orange is also a caring friend and coworker. More and more teams are coding collaboratively, whether formally via pairing or mobbing, or informally as a powerful way to onboard faster, increase code quality, and get more thorough code reviews. But remembering the syntax of co-authoring and which email someone used for their account, is it their work email, is it their personal email, can be a bit much. GitHub Desktop makes it super easy to add co-authors using just their GitHub handle. Or maybe you're more like Buddy Blue. They are very disciplined and very particular about doing things a certain way. They have the muscle memory of using Git CLI and feel super comfortable in the terminal. Still, there's things that they don't do very often, like reorder commits. I personally have been using Git for a long time, and so I do have the muscle memory of doing many things in Git in the terminal. However, I've also been a GitHub desktop user for a long time, primarily because I really like to review my own code before pushing and creating a pull request. This allows me to check for any quality issues and also review my Git history for the intention and story that I'm telling. GitHub Desktop allows me to put my editor aside and focus on this code review before opening that up to my team. But I think my favorite color kid might be Shy Violet. She was super nerdy, she loved to read and philosophize about colors, which is clearly a conversation that I am here for. And I just feel like today she would for sure be a software engineer. So in honor of Violet and Rainbow Bright and bringing color to all of you at Universe today, we're gonna add a little bit of Violet into GitHub Desktop to illustrate all the things that you can do with this powerful tool. You can see that we're in the desktop repository on the development branch, and we can open our files in the editor of our choice, in the finder, or on github.com. But first, let's make sure we have the latest updates. 
Then we'll go to the branch that I created with my super awesome changes. We can see that I've added this amazing violet octocat to the README, and we've also made the buttons purple. So we'll grab these two commits, and we'll go ahead and create a new release branch, because this work definitely needs to be out in the world. And we'll make the release branch off the development branch, and then we'll cherry pick these two commits on top. And now you can see that in the release branch, we have my two changes. So now let's push up the changes to github.com, and then we'll go over and we'll create a pull request. Today, creating a pull request takes you to github.com, but soon you'll be able to do that in app in GitHub Desktop. Now, of course, for our reviewers, we wanna have a description of what we're doing in this change. We need them to know that we're bringing Violet to GitHub Desktop, very important. We'll also go ahead and add a screenshot to our pull request description. Now that we've created our pull request, we can see that we have GitHub Actions workflows enabled on this repository, and those are running. We can also go back to GitHub Desktop and see our pull request and see the GitHub Actions and their status within Desktop itself. So now we can see that our actions have finished running and they failed, and I know why. I made a syntax mistake and I have a commit that fixes this issue. So let's go back to my original branch and let's grab that commit and we can cherry pick it on top of the release branch that I just created. And no one needs to know that I made this silly mistake, so let's go ahead and squash these two commits and just have one for making the button purple. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think we should put the readme commit first because it makes it more clear our intent and purpose with this change. So we'll go ahead and reorder the commits. Now that we've done that and it looks good, we'll push it up to github.com. And this is a force push because we've modified our commit history and GitHub Desktop will let us know that. And then we can go over to github.com and we can see that our changes are there as well. And then once these action workflows run and pass and this code gets merged, then we'll see that we have this amazing update with Violet the Octocat to the README. And our buttons and desktop will be purple. GitHub Desktop is also an open source project, which anyone can contribute to. And like most software projects, we use other open source projects within our code base. One of these is the gitignore library, where we allow you to set up a gitignore file to prevent certain types of files from being committed. Gitignore and some other open source libraries are included in the desktop code base as git submodules. Submodules are git repositories within a git repository. Yes, it can be as confusing as it sounds. Since we, the desktop team, feel the pain of submodules, we wanted to make using submodules a bit more user-friendly. Speaking of open source, wouldn't it be super cool if Rainbow Bright had her own open source programming language? I'm just saying, maybe you or someone you know might want to create this awesome thing. And let's pretend you have. If so, we would want to git ignore certain files. Okay, let's go ahead and add our Rainbow Bright git ignore file to the desktop repository. Now we can go into desktop and it tells us that we've made a submodule change, which is a much nicer experience than the normal git diff that we get with submodules. It also tells us that we can't commit this change, and if we try to, we'll get a hover over telling us that we're unable to do it. But what we can do is jump to the git ignore repository and commit the change there. Now let's create a new branch in the git ignore repository for this change that we can then reference in the desktop repository. Now looking at this, we definitely don't want to exclude files from the dark one and lurky and murky dismal, but we want to keep files from Rainbow Bright. So let's uncheck that line and then commit the changes. And we can see that only the lines we chose got committed. And then we'll go ahead and discard this Rainbow Bright change because we will always want the Rainbow Bright files. Now if we push this change up, then go back to the desktop repository. Now we can see that desktop tells us that we've switched our commit for the submodule to my new commit, and we're al allowed to check it and include it in our commit. And there it is. But you know, I worked on this with all of the GitHub desktop team. So let's go ahead and amend this commit and add them as co-authors. And we can easily add them by just their GitHub handle. So we'll add Surio, 
Becca, Marcus, and Steve. And looking in the history, we can now see that their icons and their names are right next to the commit. Now that we've wrapped up this amazing, important work, let's go ahead and review the changes that we made. So we'll select all three of these commits, and we can see that we updated the README with the Violet Octocat, we made the buttons purple, and then we also made the submodule change. And we can hop into the gitignore file to see that change, and then hop back to desktop and review right where we left off. Now let's push these up and get it released. So now that we've ensured GitHub Desktop supports this amazing, mythical, rainbow bright language, I hope you can see that GitHub Desktop really can be for everyone. GitHub Desktop lets you effortlessly modify your commit history, undo, amend, reorder, squash, and cherry pick commits at your will. GitHub Desktop facilitates great working relationships with teams by simplifying Git for those less comfortable and making co-authoring fast and easy. GitHub Desktop can fit into any workflow. You can use it for one thing, like giving yourself a code review or reordering commits, or use it as your primary version control tool. And GitHub Desktop adds some nice color beyond the terminal and the web. We handle submodules with ease. We help you focus on your changes and view the diff from multiple commits at once. You can even pick and choose lines to include or exclude in a commit. GitHub Desktop really is for everyone. You can download GitHub Desktop for Windows or Mac by going to desktop.github.com. Get the latest features faster by joining our beta at desktop.github.com slash beta. As an open source project, we welcome all contributions. Join us at github.com slash desktop slash desktop and look for the help wanted label. We can't wait to see you. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.